everybody, so today I'm going to be doing my absolutely massive May book haul. My advice is pause the video, go get a cup of tea or coffee and some snacks, then come back and sit down and watch because it's going to be quite a long one. I'm going to go through them quite quickly, so uh, let's get started. So the first few books I got probably the 1st and 2nd of May. Uh, I went on a trip to see Dr Faustus at the RSC in Stratford-upon-Avon and there are like three or four independent bookshops slash Oxfam charity shops there, so course I couldn't resist going in. So the first book that I picked up was Rooftoppers by Catherine Rundell. This is a probably a middle grade children's book about children that live on the top of roofs in London and it involves uh, magic and storytelling and all sorts of wonderful things and I've heard loads and loads of good things about this. It's been a long time since I've read any sort of um, children's book or middle grade so I'm really looking forward to getting into this. Um, this is definitely going to be something that I'm going to read next month. Secondly, I picked up The Housekeeper and the Professor by Yoko Ogawa. Um, I don't actually know much about this. It's about a professor and a housekeeper and they live together and they have a very strange and beautiful relationship. One of the quotes on the back says it's um, reminiscent of uh, Ishiguro and Murakami, so that definitely sounds like something I'll be interested in. It's a beautiful cover, so yeah, just pick up random, but it sounds really, really good. So the next one I picked up is a collection of short stories, and that's The Portable Virgin by Anne Enright. I didn't realise until I brought this home that this is the author um, of The Green Road, which I read um, about three quarters of, but I had to take it back to the library, because uh, it was overdue. So I've got to get that out and finish it, but I really enjoyed what I read of it, so it will probably be in my June wrap-up, but it was a very good story, and I'm really excited uh, to read about this. A dislocated reality and is wild and unforgettable. So that sounds really cool. Next, I couldn't resist, and this is becoming a reoccurring theme, but I picked Ghost Written by David Mitchell. Um, I'm not a massive fan of the cover, but I mean it was like 20p, so I don't think it matters. Um, I'm trying to collect all of David Mitchell's books, and then I think I'm going to have a month of just reading exclusively David Mitchell, because he doesn't seem like the author that I'm going to get sick of quickly, um, because he's from what I've read his writing style is very diverse and because of the multitude of characters that he writes about um, I think it would be quite nice to sort of experience all of his uh, narratives all in one go. From what I can gather this is one with quite a few narratives um, which is something that I really enjoy in his work. Yeah I'm really excited not knowing much about this and just sort of getting straight into it. Next is something that is definitely being a reoccurring theme and that's the Ali Smith section of my book hauls um, and this is Ali Smith's How To Be Both. This is probably one that I'm the least interested in reading. It's set two narratives. Uh, the one is in the 1460s and the second is in the 1960s and now I've heard people that read the 1960s one preferred it that way, but some people prefer reading the 1460s way first. I just, I wanted it to add to my collection and I definitely do want to get to it, but I have ones that I'd rather read first. So the next few books sort of fuel a slight obsession of mine and that is to do with World War II. I love reading historical fiction set around World War II, so if you have any recommendations, uh, please let me know. The first one is Light of the Moon by Elizabeth Buchan. And this is about a woman that's been parachuted into France, which is also something I'm really interested in. So this lady has been recruited by the Special Operations Executive to set up uh, a sort of resistance unit in France, and the tables sort of turn at the last second, and um, it sounds really, really interesting. The second one that I picked up is Cross My Heart and Hope to Live by Carmen Reed. Um, I'm pretty sure this is the sort of similar thing to The Book Thief. So this um, focuses around a 15-year-old girl called Nicole, um, who lives in a European town, and it's just been invaded by the Nazis. I think here in a child's perspective of uh, war is always really heartbreaking and heart-wrenching um, but always really good the children are always such fantastic uh, narrative devices um, and you sort of get you know the humility and the horribleness of war sort of very visceral I think this is about how she sort of learns to um, fight back and uh, learns to fire a gun and plant bombs and things. I think this is going to get quite intense. So I'm really looking forward to reading that. And lastly, which is actually what started off this whole uh, World War II um, book buying event, is Salt to the Sea by Ruta Septis. I think that's how you pronounce her last name. She wrote uh, Between Shades of Grey, which I actually haven't read. Um, I don't know if that's about war, but I know that's quite a famous book. Uh, let me know if you've read that and if it's any good, if it's worth picking up. This is also around refugees, which obviously with the current uh, sort of refugee migrant crisis that we have in the UK and sort of all over the world at the moment, I think this is going to be really relevant and I'm really looking forward to reading this. I went back to Oxfam and had another look around and I picked up The Earth Hums in B-flat by Mary Strachan, I think. Um, I think I've seen this on Jen Campbell's channel. It's about a young girl called Gwenny who says she can fly in her sleep. It just sounds really cool, it's got lots of magical realism involved. Looking forward to picking this one up as well. 
The next one was kindly sent to me from Blind Date with the Book Company, and that's Julian Barnes' A Sense of an Ending. As soon as I got this, by the way, my dad instantly snatched it up because he's a massive fan of Julian Barnes and hasn't actually read this one. Um, he said it's absolutely fantastic and I'm really gonna enjoy it, so I'm definitely gonna pick this one up soon. The next two were kindly sent to me from Review from a publisher called Pegasus, and the first one is called Tea Stills and Shelters, and the second is called Take Note. Uh, Tea Stills and Shelters focus around a London cabbie, and it sounds really interesting. Cabbies always really intrigue me because their job is just to sort of get snippets of other people's lives by taking them around places and that is exactly what this book's about so I think I'm going to really enjoy this and on a similar sort of vein um, in terms of sort of um, having snippets of people's lives is um, Take Note which is about a ten pound note that is passed between people and sort of the people's lives that it touches and snippets of their lives and things and I popped into foils on the south bank because of course I can't resist and they were doing a three for two um, on the publisher and other stories um, and on, on the whole I really really love their covers and designs and things but I've never actually picked up a book by them so of course I, I picked up three. Um, I got 101 Detectives by Ivan Vladislavic I think. I believe this is a collection of short stories yet on the back it does say fiction, um, whereas the short story collection I'm reading at the moment does say short stories, so I'm not entirely sure. There's a little bit of mystery behind this. So the author invites readers to do some detective work of their own. Each story can be read just as that, a story, or you can dig a little deeper. Take a closer look, examine the artefact from all angles, and consider the clues and patterns concealed within. So that sounds really interesting. Um, I don't know what type of stories, I honestly know very little about this book. Probably going to be diving into this after I finish the other two. The next is quite a popular one, um, especially here on Booktube, and that's Don't Try This At Home by Angela Redman. Um, again, absolutely amazing cover. I love that all the covers are sort of linked, um, and the spines are beautiful all together. This is a very popular collection of short stories, which involves magical realism. So far, I am absolutely adoring this. Um, if you like magical realism in short stories, or you like very snappy, interesting uh, short stories, then definitely pick this up. As I was reading it, it struck me that I am obviously quite interested in what I would call concept short stories in which there is a very strong concept at the start and that is sort of what carries the story like the very first one about the boyfriend that gets cut in half to me that's sort of a concept of the story whereas the ones that are a little bit more sort of emotional character based I don't particularly enjoy quite as much yet in other short story collections the character ones are the ones I've enjoyed the most I think it's just down to the author's style of writing and definitely uh, Angela Redmond's, I much prefer her concept short stories, but anyway, it's absolutely fantastic, really would recommend this. And the last one is Vertigo, and that's by Joanna Walsh. And again, I'll read you the blurb because I think that's the best way I can describe it. Um, this is a woman as a mother, daughter, wife, spectator, lover, mistress, observer and commentator, actor every actor, dressed up bright as a child or submerged in the great elegance of Paris. Yet, as every new woman emerges and every new story is told, each with a sharper, more deadpan, more aching simplicity, the calm surfaces of Joanna Walsh Walsh's vertigo shatter, pulling us deep into the panic that underlies everyday life. So yeah, again, not really sure what to expect, but uh, all these sort of shorter novellas slash short story collections I always really enjoy. So the next is also a short story collection, um, which I've recently seen on uh, Brittany from Under the Radar Books' channel. I didn't realise that she got it until uh, I saw that and I'd also got it, but that's uh, Jellyfish by Janice Galloway. Uh, this is the first Janice Galloway uh, book collection that I've ever got even though I know that she has quite a lot of things out and I'm intrigued by pretty much all of them. I had it on pre-order. I'm really excited to read it. It sounds really interesting and since then um, Freight has actually been in touch and offered to send me a couple of their books so I'll be really excited to see what they send. The quote on the dust jacket says that literature is mostly about having sex and not much about having children. Life's the other way around and uh, I think the short story collection deals with that and that sounds really interesting to me. Another book that I also had on pre-order, which I completely forgot about until the day it came, so I was really excited when I received it in the post, is B.H. Leslie's Bodies of Water, which is published by Salt. I think I saw this first on Mercedes channel. One of my favourite books in the entire world, and I know I haven't made like a top 10 favourite books video, and I really should, is a book called The Drowning of Arthur Braxton by Caroline Smiles, and it involves uh, water healers and a little boy sort of finding these mystical water healers in a uh, very rundown seaside town. Um, and this sounded sort of like the adult version and after reading this, because I read it as soon as I got it, um, it took me about half an hour to read it, I absolutely flew through it. Um, it is very similar. But this is set in two different narratives. There's one in Victorian England, um, a character called Evelyn, and then there's one in modern day and her name is Kristen. The character of Evelyn had a breakdown and was sent to a water healing hospital and then 
in modern day, it's been converted into flats and an apartment and a lady called Kristin decides she wants to live there and creepy eerie stuff starts happening and the two narratives sort of interwine and it's very cleverly written, it's excellent, it's so creepy and gothic and wonderful. I couldn't recommend it more, it's probably going to be in my top 10 books of the year, I absolutely freaking loved it. Of course I couldn't go to London without popping into the book warehouse and uh, the first book that I picked up is Wrecked by Charlotte Roche. Um, Wetlands by Charlotte Roche is recommended to me quite a lot. I saw this in uh, the book warehouse for quite cheap so I thought I'd pick it up. It reminds me a little bit of Tampa, it's always recommended if you talk about Tampa or if you go on Amazon it's Wetlands is the number one um, recommended book followed by Wrecked. It's a middle-aged woman, a devoted mother, wife and she's obsessed with sex I believe. Hopefully it's got a nice pinch of feminism in there and sort of sexual liberation would be really good so I'm looking forward to picking this up. Then I saw this book which I've never seen before, I've never heard anything of and it's called Happiness Like Water Stories uh, and I'll try and pronounce this. Chinello Ocparanta I would imagine, sorry I've totally butchered your name. <laughs> This, I think, is quite a character-based short story collection, um, similar to How to Breathe Under Water. It sounds like childhood, coming of age, romance, um, sibling rivalry, that sort of thing. It sounds really interesting. It's absolutely beautiful cover. Love it. Next, I picked up another children's book, which was interesting for me, and that's Wildwood by Colin Melloy, and the illustrations are by Carson Ellis. I've seen this so many times in foils, and I've always wanted to pick it up. All the blurb tells me that it is a little girl called Prue and her brother is abducted by some crows and taken into the wood and she sort of has to go and find him and it sounds like an amazing children's adventure story and I can't wait to read it and hopefully love it. Next I took my boyfriend on a surprise trip to London um, and we obviously popped in a few bookshops and I was really excited to see Blacklands there. Um, I'm really interested in crime fiction and serial killers. That sounds a bit weird. He was only 12, he reasoned. He couldn't be expected to get stuff like writing to serial killers right the first time. I have seen a few reviews of this but I am going to go into it blind and I would recommend that you do as well if you're interested in this. So the next one that I picked up is again something that I've never heard of and it's Kick the Animal Out by Veronique Oveld. Um, and I'm pretty sure this was translated from French, yeah, by Adriana Hunter. And this is about a girl called Rosie and her mother goes missing and her and her mum are very close. And her dad is a circus manager and he seems a little bit suspicious, so obviously she's quite suspicious as well. Um, I read a couple of pages in the bookshop and it was really funny and interesting and quite dark darkly comic. Yeah, something new that I haven't heard of. Another book that I picked up there that I hadn't heard of before is After Me Comes the Flood, uh, a novel by Sarah Perry. The sole reason that I bought this in the end is because the blurb completely drew me in. So the story focuses around a gentleman called Joe Cole who lives in London and one day he decides to give up and move away and just drive out somewhere um, and he gets sort of into the countryside and his car breaks down. So he sort of goes looking uh, for a house, maybe some help and these people greet him and they already know him and there's already a bedroom made up for him and all these people are coming to see him and he has no idea who these people are or what the hell is going on but I'm probably going to carry on reading this after I film this video. I'm really intrigued to know what happens, it's so interesting to me. So the next book I picked up is again absolutely gorgeous and that's The Ballroom by Anna Hope which is a brand new book. So this is set in 1911 and it's a bit of a historical fiction slash romance mystery thriller sort of thing and it surrounds two characters John and Ella and this asylum in the Yorkshire Moors where they live uh, has a dance in a ballroom every so often and they meet for the first time and the story sort of goes on from there. Again, I don't know loads about this book. Um, I saw the blurb on Amazon and definitely thought that was something I'd be interested in. And finally, the last book in this giant haul is uh, one that was kindly sent to me by Scepter um, and that's Harmless Like You by Rowan Hiseo Buchanan. I think I've pronounced that right. So from the press release I can see that uh, Yuki, a young Japanese woman, is living in 1960s New York and Jay, uh, who has to confront his mother who abandoned him. It seems like it's a dual narrative, um, parallel stories, and it sounds really interesting. Definitely a sort of literary fiction character study. I'm really excited to pick this up and thank you so much Scepter for sending this to me. I'm really excited to give it a read. And there we are. Thank you all so much for watching. Uh, well done if you sat through all that. That was a lot books to get through but hopefully there's something in there for you something that you might want to pick up or add to your tbr lists and um, please let me know if you've got any book recommendations surrounding these in the comments i'd be really interested to hear your thoughts or if you've read any of them of course so until next time happy reading and i hope you have a really lovely week bye